Stop! Has this ever happened to you? Oh boy, I can't wait to use my 2011 iMac that doesn't suffer from crippling graphics card failure. No, 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 what? What, what, no, no, stop, 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 no! <coughs> now what do I do? Every day, in homes all around the world, hundreds of millions of people are burned or emotionally scarred by the deaths of their 2011 27-inch IMAX. The graphics cards are known to fail, and with them the hearts and lives of many people in this great nation of Earth. But fortunately, there's Salvation, a new company that aims to repurpose these old shattered husks and turn them into working appliances once again. Come with me, I'll show you. Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn anything by doing it yourself with interactive hands-on lessons in math, science, and computer science. Interactive learning helps you learn six times more effectively than lecture videos. So if you want to learn the skills that you would need to start building a custom board to interface with the video output of an iMac, well, Brilliant might be a good place to start. Maybe check out some courses in computer memory or computer science fundamentals or even electricity and magnetism. Brilliant offers clear and intuitive explanations with courses that are designed to boost creative problem solving skills to teach you how to think about STEM by guiding you through fun problems. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant by checking out this special offer just for viewers. Head to brilliant.org slash lukemiani or click the link in the description below to get started for free with Brilliant's lessons. The first 200 people to join will also receive 20% off an annual membership. So with that, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. So if you guys have watched my channel for a couple of years, then you will be well familiar with 2011 IMAX. I have done a lot of video projects with these over the years. Back in 2018, I bought one with the intention of upgrading it, but accidentally killed it. And then I ended up turning the empty shell from that iMac into a Mac mini last year. I even have a 21.5 inch that I upgraded for a video a couple of years ago where I put a more powerful graphics card, CPU, and RAM upgrade. These things are pretty versatile. They have mostly standard and upgradable components. However, this one, which I grabbed on eBay for about 100 bucks, has a failed graphics card. Typically, if you have a computer like this, you're, you're kind of out of luck here because Apple does have the ability to use target display mode on these old iMacs, but if the board itself is not working, if the computer can't boot up, then this is all basically junk, or at least until Juicy Crumb hops into the picture. Essentially, what we can do here is turn the iMac into a fully functioning external display. And this is significantly more advanced than the video I made a couple of months ago where I turned a 5K iMac into a studio display with a little eBay adapter. No, this, this cuts no corners. We are going to be using the original power supply, the original camera and microphones and speakers. Yeah, this, this is some next level shit. This is super cool. So here is what we're working with. Now this is a prototype, but this right here is a custom printed PCB. You can see we even have some hand soldered interfaces here for the speakers and an aux jack to be able to use this with 3.5 millimeter. This is some seriously cool engineering. Now they even sent over this original prototype, which is all completely hand wired to give you guys an idea of what kind of development went into this. This is gnarly and a lot of work has gone into making this into this, which I think you'll agree is a lot more polished. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the installation process. And in order to do that, obviously we're going to have to remove the IMAX logic board, but Unlike in my previous project, we don't have to remove 
all of the other stuff that's in there as well. So this shouldn't be too difficult. As long as you've got the iFixit ProTech Toolkit and the iMac Disassembly Guides, which I've linked down below, it's really not too bad. Also, iFixit wanted me to tell you that right now through December 14th, you can get 25% off bundles in preparation for Black Friday. So definitely check those out. And again, big shout out to iFixit for sponsoring the channel. So let's get started, shall we? Having taken the display off, it came to my attention that this iMac has literally never been cleaned. It was absolutely disgusting in here. I mean, look at the fan. But anyway, now that we have de-dusted this machine, we have to remove the stuff we don't need. So the computer part and the optical drive and the hard drive, don't need that. Okay, so we've got the logic board disconnected as much as we can. You unplug all the things, take out all the screws, but there's still connectors on the other side and it's really wedged in here. So I'm gonna give you guys a crash course on how to remove 2011 iMac logic boards. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is grab by both heat sinks and pull out until you feel some tension. And then we're gonna start wiggling back and forth with an upward pull. We don't wanna pull out in a snapping way, we just wanna pull up in a more friendly way. Can you see here how friendly I'm being? Okay, you see that? There we go. Now, with this thing sort of suspended here, we've got a SATA connector, we've got a SATA power, and we have the logic board power. You guys can't even see me at this point. Oh, I always forget one connector. Think we're done, look at that. It's out. And so now what we're left with is, well, in addition to a whole lot of dust, <coughs> the shell of an iMac that is a perfect candidate for making into a display. After removing the optical drive and the plastic partition wall at the back of the iMac, it's now time to start installing the Juicy Crumb board. So, uh, about that. Yeah, this iMac, it's not a 2011. That, that is what I have now found out. I ordered a 2011. The box says that it's a 2011, but I pulled the CPU out of the logic board, and this is a Core i3-550, which would have been the entry level 2010. I have to put this entire iMac back together by another iMac, and then do this whole thing again. So, yay. Okay, another day, another iMac. This one is actually a 2011 now. And this one actually works, but it has a crack in the glass, so I only paid 100 bucks for it. And, well, I already have some glass, so we should be good to go. I now just have to do everything that I already did over again, and then we can finally actually get the Juicy Crumb board installed and test this thing out. So we've got the Juicy Crumb board installed. Now all that's left is to put the display panel back on. Okay, so let's do a test run here before we button everything up. We've got a Thunderbolt connection here to a MacBook Pro. So we'll plug in the iMac with its factory power cord and we'll hit the factory power button. Whoa, that was like, immediate. Today's video is Wow, that's pretty good. It sounds just like the normal speakers with the stock amp. I I'm impressed. Let's go ahead and put this all together and, and talk about what we've just done here because this is actually really incredible. 
I have talked many times on this channel about continuing to use older Macs as much as possible, but there will come a point eventually in the lifetime of a computer where its internals are either broken or otherwise inoperable or just too slow to be realistically feasible. But a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 display well, that is a screen resolution that people will go out and spend hundreds of dollars buying right now, to this day. So why not use one that you might already have and just make it into an actual display? But beyond just the recycling and reuse aspect here, there are a number of features about the iMac, that all-in-one form factor that carry over when it's being used as a monitor. The power supply being built in, for example, means we don't have to have a power brick hanging out the back. And then of course, there's the option to choose between my MacBook's camera or the built-in camera on the iMac, which works here perfectly normally over the USB connection that we installed. Now, sure, it's a 2011 iMac camera, it's not fantastic, but how many monitors out there have a seamless built-in camera? And look, even the little green LED that tells you that the camera's on still works. And of course, who could forget having speakers that are actually pretty decent. So this isn't just an old iMac turned into a display. I mean, it is, but it's more than that. It's actually a pretty fully featured display. Now, I do have a few little criticisms here that I think could make this into a better product eventually. First off, right now, the way that Juicy Chrome has this set up we have three connections. I would personally love to see all of these things from the camera data to the speakers to the display go over a single Type-C connection for maximum versatility and use with new Macs. And I would especially love for Juicy Crumb to do this exact project but with a 5K iMac because those are panels that are extremely good that Apple is still selling in the studio display but these iMacs are five, six, seven years old and they're getting a little bit tired and it would be a shame to see those panels go to waste. So I think that a company like Juicy Chrome, which has shown their ability to make something like this pretty seamless, would have a lot of success doing the same on the newer iMacs. And in fact, they are working on another project which hopefully will be ready for me to take a look at early next year. So remember back last year when I took the 27 inch 2011 iMac and put a Mac mini in it? Well, Juicy Chrome is doing that, but a lot better. This is their prototype bracket, which is meant to install a Mac mini logic board above the hard drive fan for cooling. And basically the idea here is to turn this iMac into a legitimate M1 Mac mini with actual decent installation. I'm really looking forward to trying that because I think that could be a phenomenal idea. So definitely make sure to check those guys out. They are doing some really interesting stuff. I've left links in the description below. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this project. Is this something that you would be interested in? I've also left links down below to the iFixit Protect Toolkit, as well as their disassembly guides for the 27 inch iMac. It's definitely a little daunting, but it's pretty doable. And I really hope that Juicy Chrome is able to bring this out to market because I could foresee this being a very popular upgrade. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.